Today we're going to finish up The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. We've read part one and part two. We're going to finish it with part three. Um, to start, I think we can just talk about what happened so far, and then we can go to the th part three and read it together and learn some of the words together. And at the very end, that's when I will go from the beginning all the way to the end one last time, okay? But let's get started. Let's review what's going on. Um, so there's a family of rabbits. They live under a tree. And there's the mother and then three good rabbits and then one naughty rabbit named Peter. And the mother says, oh, go play outside, but don't go to the farm. Don't go to Mr. McGregor's farm because he put your father into a pie and ate him. Oh, scary. And so Mr. Mrs. Rabbit goes off to go shopping and then the children start to play. The three good rabbits are being good. Peter decides to... Go to Mr. McGregor's farm and eat some vegetables and have a feast. But what happens? <gasps> Mr. McGregor sees Peter and then da, 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 Peter has to run away and escape. And he loses his shoes and then he gets stuck in a net. Then some birds help him out a little bit. And he runs away. He loses his shirt, but he gets away from Mr. McGregor. And then he tried to hide in a flower pot inside the shed. But Mr. McGregor found him and made him run away. And then Peter got lost. Peter didn't know how to find the way home. And so Peter was very sad. Oh, he's sobbing. And then Peter saw a cat. He, well, first Peter saw a mouse and asked the mouse for help. And the mouse didn't really help. And then next Peter saw a cat and asked the cat for help. But, no, he didn't. <laughs> Sorry. He was thinking about asking the cat for help, but decided, uh, maybe this is too dangerous. So Peter decided to stay away from the cat and try to find his way home. So that's where we start today. This is part three. We should be able to finish the story. And Peter is still in the garden, in the, in the farm, looking for a way home. So let's try reading and talking about it. <clears throat> he went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly... Quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. <clears throat> His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. So, <clears throat> this is talking, this he is Peter, right? And so, he went back towards the tool shed. Do you remember what a tool shed is? A shed is a little bit like a house. It's like a small building. And a tool shed is a little tiny building filled with tools. Uh, here it's for gardening and um, growing plants. So using tools to work the soil. So suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. A hoe is one of those tools. A hoe is very, a long thing. Let's use some color. A hoe is a long thing, and then at the end, it's, oh, well, not like that. 
It's a big flat piece of metal like this, or kind of like this. Um, it might be bent sometimes too. So a hoe is used to like cut the soil or maybe pull the soil. Okay. Um, and so Mr. McGregor is using a hoe and it's making some sounds. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. <laughs> That's the sound of him working in the farm. And so Peter gets nervous. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. Well, bushes are kind of plants. And you can imagine it's like a tree, but it's on the ground. So if this is the ground, a bush comes out of the ground like this. Okay? And so Peter skitter, uh, scuttered underneath the bush. So scuttered is kind of like ran. So he ran under the bush and he's hiding under it. Uh, underneath is the same as under. No real difference. Okay. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out. Again, we learned that presently is kind of an old way to say now or at that time or at that moment. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out. Here this as is a little bit like since or because. Since nothing happened, can you see that? Uh, I can't see my screen. No, you can't see that. Uh, a little bit. How, how about that? Um, since nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. A wheelbarrow is what he's sitting in in this picture. He is sitting on this thing that has a wheel on the front. I'll use a different color so you can actually see. So it's kind of like a bucket. But on the front, there's a big wheel. So it's easy to roll. And then there are handles that you can hold when you push it. So it's kind of like this shape. Um, I hope that helps. But it's a tool that you can use in your garden or on a farm, a wheelbarrow. Um, my family used to have one for like cleaning the yard. Okay. <clears throat> so he climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. Peeped means he looked. He looked over the side, like in the picture. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. Again, a hoe is this tool, and so using the hoe is called hoeing. So he's going scritch, scratch. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. So his back is towards Peter, so he's not looking at Peter. And beyond him, beyond meaning like on the other side, past him. So, going beyond him, or past him, is the gate. So, Peter can see that the gate is over there behind Mr. McGregor. Okay? <clears throat> Keep going. <clears throat> Peter got down very quietly off the wheel wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Okay, so Peter got down very quietly. So he was on the wheelbarrow, he got down, just like he got out, he stepped down onto the ground and started running as fast as he could go. So as fast as he could go just means 
flat out, going very, very, very fast. He can't go faster. Along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Here, they're using the word walk as a noun, as a thing. Uh, I would say walkway. Instead of just the word walk, I would say walkway, or you could say the word path. Okay? And you can see in the picture there's a path on the ground. There aren't bushes there, it's just flat. So you can call that a walkway. Okay? The way that you walk, the place that you walk. Um, now, people don't usually use walk this way anymore. But you can you know that it's a walk. So it's something. And so maybe you know what they're talking about. Along a straight walk. It's like, okay, it's a thing, and it uses the word walk. Well, okay, it's a place where you walk. Okay? Um, along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. A black currant is a fruit. And it looks like a raspberry, but it's black. Oh, that's wrong. It looks like a blueberry, but it's black. <laughs> um, so he ran behind some black currant bushes. Black currant is very delicious. Uh, let's see if I can get a picture really quickly. It looks kind of like a blueberry. Yeah, like that. So, this is these are black currants. Uh, if you get Skittles, the candy Skittle, which in Taiwan or in Chinese are called rainbow candies, uh, the purple Skittles in Taiwan are black currant flavor. In America, the dark colored Skittles are grape. But I think in Taiwan they're black currant because that's the flavor in England too. Uh, they're really delicious. Okay. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner. Caught sight. Well, the word sight is about seeing, right? So if you caught sight, that just means saw. He saw him. So he caught sight of Peter. He saw Peter. Um, the difference is that caught sight sounds like it's a little bit faster. Like he caught sight of him. Maybe it was a surprise. Um, okay. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. I'm not worried. I just got to go, go, go. <laughs> he slipped underneath the gate. Slip is move quickly. Slip, like sliding, kind of. And he goes shoo, underneath the gate. And was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Okay. Here, the words at last are like finally. Um, finally would go in front of the word safe. So he was finally safe. Or you could say he was safe at last. Meaning that he was waiting for it and he really wanted it. Okay? He was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. We said in part one that the wood can mean the forest. Okay? Not the thing wood, but here means the forest. Uh... You could, in American, we would say the woods. Like, so my old house was in the woods. There were lots of trees around us. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. So, uh, Peter lost his jacket and shoes, so Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket 
and the shoes for a scarecrow. A scarecrow is a thing that scares crows. Sometimes it looks like a man. Sometimes there will be a head on top. But a scarecrow is a thing that scares crows. A crow is a big black bird. Okay? And um, he hung up a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Uh, a crow is a kind of blackbird. Um, to frighten them means to scare them. Actually, I'm not sure about the crows. Um, I'm not sure if blackbirds and crows are exactly the same thing. Um, that's a good question. Is a crow considered a blackbird? Or is a blackbird a special kind of bird? And is a crow different? I'm not sure. If you know, let me know. Or maybe we can look it up later. Um, Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. I think this is pretty easy, but the word till is like until. So he never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home. Okay? If you have questions, let me know. Uh, and then let's keep going. <clears throat> he was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. <sighs> his mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. <laughs> He's naked. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Oh my gosh, Peter, what are you doing? So, he was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole. So to flop down, you can imagine Peter is so tired. And here's the, the floor of, the, of their home. Here's Peter. And what does he do? Flop. <laughs> flop. He flopped down. You can imagine the sound flop. If a person or a rabbit flops down, it's kind of like they drop their body onto something because they're so tired. Uh, you could eat, say it with your jacket or something. I flopped my jacket on the couch. Um, maybe. Usually it's for a person when they're tired. Oh, I flopped on the bed, or I flopped on the couch. Um, so it's that sound, flop, that you're falling onto something because you're so tired. Okay? So he was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. So he's going straight to sleep because he's been running away from Mr. McGregor. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. Now, wondered is a great word. You might know it already, but wonder is like to think and think what the answer might be. You don't know the answer, but you try to imagine the answer. So she's wondering what he had done with his clothes. She's thinking about, hey, where did his clothes go? They disappeared. He came home naked. <laughs> it was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. So second little jacket and second pair of shoes. So we only have the word second one time, but he lost a jacket before. This is the second jacket. He lost a pair of shoes before. This is the second pair of shoes. Okay? This is the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Now, this word is old-fashioned. People don't usually use this word. 
but maybe sometimes just for fun. A fortnight means two weeks. So, um, give me one second. Yeah. Um, maybe people in England still use Fortnite. I'm not sure. But Americans don't usually say this word. Maybe if you're just having fun, uh, you might use the word Fortnite. But Fortnite is an old way to say two weeks. So, um, I haven't seen him in a fortnight means I haven't seen him in two weeks. Okay. Um, keep going. <clears throat> Poor Peter. He's so tired. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. So, I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. So, I'm sorry to say is kind of like, uh, sorry to tell you. Um, it's like, oh, it's too bad. Oh, what a shame. It's too bad, but, uh, it's like, here the word sorry is like, I'm a little bit disappointed, like, or it's a little bit sad to say. I'm sorry to say, like, I'm not happy to tell you because we want Peter to be healthy and happy. So I'm sorry to say Peter was not very well during the evening. He was feeling kind of sick and tired, right? His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea. Chamomile tea is a special kind of herbal tea. Um, I think chamomile is a flower. I'm not sure. Um, should I check? Chamomile. Yeah, it's a flower. Chamomile is a flower, and so we'd say that it's a kind of herbal tea. Um, and chamomile tea, people say it helps you rest and helps you go to sleep. It's pretty popular in the U.S. to get chamomile tea um, for nighttime. And so, um, Peter was not feeling well. The mother made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to Peter. A dose is a word, usually it's used for medicine. It's like one serving. Serving is usually used for food. Dose is used for medicine. It's like the right amount for one time. So she gave a dose of chamomile tea to Peter maybe like one cup, one little cup to drink to help him get some rest. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. So this is the mother talking about the tea and talking about it like it's medicine. One tablespoonful. A tablespoon is a kind of spoon and it's the bigger spoon. The small spoon is called a teaspoon. A big spoon is called a tablespoon. The small spoon is for stirring your tea. The tablespoon is for eating food when you're at the table. Okay? So one tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. So that's how much one dose is. Just one spoon with tea for Peter. And that's enough to help Peter go to sleep. Next up. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. <laughs> so, um, poor Peter Rabbit is feeling sick and tired, and his mother gives him chamomile tea to help him go to sleep. Kind of like it's medicine. But Peter's nice 
siblings, Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, the other three baby rabbits, they don't have to go to bed. They don't have to drink tea. They get to have yummy things. They had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. So they have a nice supper. Oh, I forgot. Maybe I should tell you this word. Do you know the word supper? Uh, in America, supper is the same as dinner. Now, when I was growing up, we usually used the word supper to talk about dinner. It's like, okay, it's time for supper. Uh, come to the table, let's eat together. It's like, oh, what did you have for supper? Or what do you want for supper? So in the United States, supper is the same as dinner. I think a long time ago, supper was a little bit like brunch, I think. I believe I that there's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And dinner is what you eat at night. Uh, and then in the middle of breakfast and lunch, there's brunch, right? Oops, sorry, I'm punching the microphone. Uh, and I believe a long time ago, supper was in the middle of lunch and dinner, like an early dinner, something like that. And I think that was what it meant a long time ago. But now, when people use the word supper, we mean it to mean the same as dinner. Okay? So, in America, you might hear somebody say, Oh, what do you want for supper? Or they might say, What do you want for dinner? Same thing. So, poor little Peter Rabbit is feeling sick. And he has to go to bed. And then... Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little rabbits, they get to eat yummy, delicious bread, milk, and blackberries for supper. And that's the end of our story. So, Peter went on a big adventure, and uh, did he have a good time? I don't think so. He did eat a lot of vegetables at the garden, but then he had to run away. It was really scary. And then he felt sick at the end. So what do you think we learned from the story? Well, don't be naughty. And if your mom tells you to relax and be good, you should probably listen, right? Um, so now that we've read through the whole story, just one more time, how we go back to the beginning and read through the whole thing, okay? Uh, it might take a little while, so... Get ready. So, let me have a sip of water first. As I choke myself. <clears throat> okay, are you ready? <clears throat> Let's start from the beginning. The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Oops, you can't see Beatrix Potter. Try again. The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank, underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. <laughs> now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella, and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, 
ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. Oops. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Dun dun dun! Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. <sighs> Peter gave himself up for loss and shed big tears, <sighs> but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him, and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each one. Presently, Peter sneezed. Kertishoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. And tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking all round. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone, door, the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. <sighs> then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Hmm. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched 
as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go, along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. <sighs> his mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. Hmm. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. <clears throat> His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. <laughs> but Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. So, that's the end of The Tale of Peter Rabbit. So I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you had a lot of fun. I hope you learned a lot of things. And I, most importantly, I hope you had a great time. So um, that's it for today. We can stop here. Uh, maybe next time, if we want to, we could try another short story. So um, I'm trying to choose some classic stories that you might enjoy and that are a little bit hard but not too hard so um if you have any ideas let me know um i think beatrix potter stories are pretty fun so maybe we could try one of her other stories i think she has 27 stories about little animals like this so maybe we can choose another one um so yeah i hope you had a great time Let's stop here. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. Don't be shy. And I'll see you next time. So thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.